Recently, I took you on a journey through the levels of complexity of heroes in both League of Legends and Dota 2. After that was done, I thought I could do the same for items, but as I dove deeper into the task, I found out it's just not that simple. Come with me on another wacky adventure through game design, and I will show you the world of items. Okay, you saw the title card just now, and might be wondering, what are our item systems? In short, it's just another gameplay system, similar to other systems like earning gold and experience, objectives, and ability synergy. The item system of a game defines how items interact not just with each other, but with other systems in the game to provide a complete gameplay package. Things like how the item augments your hero power, the ease or difficulty of using an item, gold and space efficiency, all contribute to how the item system functions. Though the item systems of League and Dota are extremely different, they do share a few key similarities. In both games, you're limited to six basic item slots and one unique bonus slot, restricting the upper bounds of gained power from items. Items grant a variety of combat stats as a general rule, though some items don't look the part, being either farming focused, vision, or mobility, which aren't as easily classified. Powerful items are generally made from much cheaper components, providing a build path you can gradually follow. And that's about it for the similarities. It may look like I've covered all there is for items, but trust me, that's just the beginning. Now, it's time to look more deeply into all the major differences between the item systems of both Dota 2 and League of Legends. Item Progression For both games, the more expensive an item, the stronger and more focused it becomes. Many small general purpose items can build into special purpose end game pieces. The difference here is that League's items tend to retain their gold efficiency for base stats as they get more expensive, while Dota's item system results in expensive items dramatically losing gold efficiency with price. In Dota, the most stats efficient item, the Ironwood Branch, is also the cheapest at 50 gold for one strength, agility, and intelligence, or in general terms, about a 2% increase in almost every combat stat. Meanwhile, at just over 5,000 gold sits a stat item granting 22 in each stat, plus some health and mana. Not counting item unique effects, this is an efficiency loss of over 70%. In League, completed items tend to retain the stats of their components. Thus, you're greatly incentivized to rush complete items in League of Legends almost every time. Even expensive item examples like Gale Force and Heartsteel retain 100% base stats efficiency. When playing Dota, you instead want to fill out your inventory with cheap, efficient items, then gradually upgrade or replace them into your late game build. The crazy cost and efficiency in Dota is the price paid for space efficiency in your inventory. Otherwise, people would just buy nothing but iron branches for the whole game. Item Power In both games, items are purchased to grant you and your team more power. The difference is with what power looks like. League of Legends has two major scaling stats, that being Ability Power and Attack Damage, or AP and AD for short. When you buy an item that grants one of these two stats, any abilities of the holder that scale with that stat get stronger, usually providing more healing, shielding, or damage. Even AD carries can do high damage with their abilities late game. Dota is nothing like that. In all of Dota 2, there's maybe half a dozen abilities that scale in any way with the stats purchased on an item. And at the same time, there's only a couple of items that provide Dota's equivalent of AP, called Spell Damage. In Dota, your abilities get maxed out with levels alone, as opposed to both requiring levels and items, as is the case in League of Legends. So then, if your abilities are already as strong as they're likely to get, what do you buy items for? Well, you buy more abilities, of course. More on that later on, in my next video. Item Roles The roles of heroes in both games is pretty similar when it comes to teamfighting. You got the tanks, 
the DPS, assassins, supports, initiators, you get the idea. In each game, there are items you can buy to make you better at your combat role. Though the roles in Dota can vary and heroes like to multiclass. To look at how item design caters to their intended roles, it's best to visualize a filtering grid for buying an item. League's item filtering grid is pretty straightforward. First, the item can be filtered by their scaling stat. Next, you check for whether you want high values of the stat, if you want defense, or if you value utility. Every connection between group A and B represents one or more items. In the last step, you can choose an item based on the unique effect you are after. Often, changing any of the stages results in a clear item to buy for your needs. This system can feel a bit formulaic and sometimes stifling for creative builds, but it's also a way to easily choose an item based on unfamiliar situations. Dota's filtering grid looks a bit sillier. Instead of AP, AD, and Null, you have a Boolean classification of does it require auto attacks, yes or no? Next to this, you have the classification of can it be used on allies, yes or no? There are usually two supports on each team instead of one, so it's normal to see twice as many support favoring items in Dota as there are in League. The last boolean is actually if you want the item to make you tanky or if you don't care. Other than the occasional utility item like gem or early game consumables, items in Dota's system fit within these three boolean filters, after which, just as in League, a player can choose the desired item unique effect. You may notice that I didn't filter by the RPG stats of Strength, Agility, and Intelligence. This is because in the late game, if you don't care a lot about auto attacks, the primary stat it gives doesn't have that much of a sway on you. You might want a Heart of Tarask, a Strength item on Agility carries for pure tankiness. You might want to go Shiva's Garden on the tank for the attack speed slow, even though it gives intelligence. And you might even choose items without RPG stats. In the late game, there's a lot of focus on item unique passives and actives in Dota. Things can get wild. Okay, this video has already gotten really long and technical. Give me a sub or like or something because in the next video, I'll be comparing item actives and passives. That should close out this item comparison miniseries and should be a fun time. Especially if you're a League player, trust me. You do want to check it out when it comes out. For now, thanks for coming and sticking through to the end. I'll see you around. Laters.